Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice radical equation from Romania. We have 1 over square root of x plus 1 over square root of y equals 1 over square root of 20. And we're going to be looking for integer solutions. So this is a Diophantine equation. And notice that x and y have to be positive. So in other words, we're looking for positive integer solutions. So, we started by saying x, y is positive. And now let's go ahead and isolate 1 over square root of y from here. There's different ways to go about it. I'm, I'm going to show you a different approach as well to simplify this. So, 1 over square root of y can be written as 1 over square root of 20 minus 1 over square root of x. Let's go ahead and square both sides when we do. We're going to square the difference on the right-hand side. So it's going to be 1 over y equals 1 over 20 minus 2 times ab, you know, the term in the middle, and plus 1 over x. Now notice that pretty much everything is rational here since x and y are positive integers, and obviously they have to be different from 0 because we said they're positive. So we can just go ahead and you know, just uh, simplify this a little bit. So we can write it as 1 over y equals 1 over 20 plus 1 over x minus 2 over square root of 20x. Now notice that everything is rational except for the radical. So that radical also needs to be a rational expression. So this means the square root of 20x must be rational. In order for that to happen, what's inside the radical needs to be a perfect square. So 20x needs to be something like n squared, where n is an integer. But that just means that I have to multiply 20 by something. So we're kind of doing a little bit of number theory here. Think about the prime factorization of 20. It has the 4 and the 5, 2 squared. So 4 is already a square and 5 is not. So if you can multiply by 5, so x needs to contain a 5. So if x is at least 5, then we're going to get a perfect square, right? Which is 100. But it could also be 5 times another square. So x can basically be written as, from here, x can be written as 5 times k squared, where k is an integer. And similarly, if you just isolate the 1 over square root of x and square both sides and blah, 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 go through the same thing, y can be written as 5 times m squared. Because it's symmetrical, you're, you're going to get the same idea. Okay? Now, since we know that x and y can be written like this, let's go ahead and plug these into the original equation, which was 1 over square root of x plus 1 over square root of y equals 1 over square root of 20. Now, if you replace x with 5k squared, obviously, you can just choose k and m to be positive in this case. It doesn't really matter because you're going to square them to find x anyways. So when you square root it, if k is positive and m is positive, then you're going to get something like this. 1 over k root 5 plus 1 over m root 5 equals 1 over square root of 20. Obviously, k and m have to be positive because if they're not, then you're going to get a negative expression on the left-hand side. Well, if k and m are negative, then it's going to be the same thing. But anyways, okay, I'm confusing myself here, so don't worry about it. So this is really nice because we can basically take out a square root of 5, or should I say 1 over square root of 5. So let's go ahead and do this. We can take out 1 over square root of 5. That's going to give me 1 over k plus 1 over m. And here I can write this as 1 over square root of 5 times 1 over 2. Because square root of 20 can be written as square root of 4 times square root of 5. And that is 2 times the square root of 5. Awesome. So now we can go ahead and cancel these out. And we end up with a very simple very nice equation. 1 over k plus 1 over m equals 1 half. Obviously, this equation is, you know, interesting in and of itself, but uh, we're going to, you know, just um, back substitute to find the answers. So at this point, you can just go ahead and isolate one of the variables. For example, you can isolate uh, 1 over m, and this is going to be 1 half minus 1 over k. This can be written as um, k minus 2 over I'm going to erase that, it just bugs me. k minus 2 over 2k. If you flip both sides, m becomes 
2k over k minus 2. So I'm going to do a little bit of hocus pocus here, a little mathematics. You can go ahead and subtract 4 and add 4 to make uh, this expression divisible by k minus 2. It's a really neat trick that we use with number theory or, or algebra, it doesn't matter. That gives us 2 because that is 2 times k minus 2. And the rest, the remainder, this is also used with polynomial divisions. And this is what I get. M is in terms of k, but it's in a nicer way. Since M and k are both integers, positive integers, then uh, k minus 2 must be a divisor of 4, and you can just proceed with different possibilities. Or you can just use a different approach. Remember I told you I was going to show you different approaches to the problem. Not necessarily two methods, but kind of like different approaches to parts of the problem. You could also do the following, like you have 1 over k plus 1 over m equals 1 half, right? And then from here you can make a common denominator, why not, right? m plus k over km or mk equals 1 half. And now let's go ahead and cross multiply. And when we do, we get km. I want to use the write the product first, km equals 2m plus 2k. All right, great. Now, I'm going to do, hopefully, you already realize what I'm about to do. And if you said Simon, you're right about that. Okay, yes, I'll use Simon. Uh, and Simon is short for Simon's favorite factoring trick, which is also known as SFFT. I just say Simon, it's easier. So now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to factor a M here. That's going to give me K minus 2. And I'm hoping to get another K minus 2. But if I take out a negative 2, I only get K. So I need minus 2, but minus 2 times minus 2, or negative 2 times negative is positive 4, which means I have to add 4 to both sides, and I did it. Yay! So now k minus 2 is a common factor, grouping, and this is what Simon says. So Simon says group and factor. So this is nice because you, you're kind of thinking about, it's the same thing, by the way, if you just isolate m and, you know, Okay, what am I talking about? We already isolated them. Okay, great. So if you subtract uh, 2 from both sides of this equation and then cross multiply, you get the same thing. So it is the same thing, of course. So now, but this one is a little easier to handle. You don't have to worry about what is uh, K and M in this case because it's fairly easy. So I'm going to look at different factorizations. So how about 4 and 1? By the way, if I consider 4 and 1, I don't have to worry about 1 and 4 because I have perfect symmetry, so I can definitely... Uh, replace x and y, right? So kind of like switch them around. So uh, 4, 1 is a possibility, and this gives us uh, k equals 6 and m equals 3. But let's go back to x and y. Remember, we were uh, able to write x and y like this. Uh, x is 5k squared and y is 5m squared, right? So let me go ahead and copy that here. So x equals 5k squared and y equals 5 m squared. That's what I'm going to use to evaluate the values. So if k is equal to 6, 6 squared is 36, 5 times that, so x gives me 180, and y becomes 45. So that is a solution. Of course, we're going to flip that too. Let's go ahead and take a look at another scenario. How about 2, 2 for k minus 2 and n minus 2? From here, we get k equals 4, m equals 4. It just means that x equals 5 times 16 and y equals the same. So x is going to become 80 and y is going to be the same. So we, we're kind of getting these, and they're not the only solutions because we're going to look at other cases as well. How about negative 4 and negative 1? If k minus 2 is negative 4, that just indicates k is negative 2, but you know that's not going to work. If we have negative 2 and negative 2, that means k is 0. That's not going to work either because if k is 0, x is 0, uh-oh, that's a no-no. You can't do it. So those are the possibilities. Let's go ahead and write our solutions as ordered pairs. We got 180, 45. And of course, we can flip this and write 45, 180. And of course, 80, 80 is perfectly symmetrical. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.